The last handful of years, there's been so much momentum behind EV, uh, specifically in the trucking space. But the reality is, over the last 12, 18 months, uh, we've seen a continued decline to the point of many of the companies in the space are facing bankruptcy or have already filed for bankruptcy. They can't raise additional cash. And so we were in a unique position where we still had a strong balance sheet. We had about $300 million of cash uh, on our balance sheet starting the, at the beginning of this year. And we had a unique technology in-house as well that is a generator, basically a mini power plant that can be deployed outside of uh, commercial buildings, data centers, EV charging sites. And so we saw that it was best to pivot the company to focus on that and actually move out of that EV uh, semi-truck space. All right. So you have this Carno uh, platform. Tell us about that. Yeah, so think of it as you know a power plant that's the size of like um, the bed of a pickup truck almost. It can produce 200 kilowatts of power, and uh, it's designed to be able to be stacked together. So if you think of uh, an EV charging site, you're maybe going to need a couple of megawatts of power, so maybe you know 10 Carno generators. Uh, or if you think of a data center, you maybe need uh, 40 megawatts of power. Uh, but if you then go to the other end of the extreme, you think of like a, a commercial. Um, uh, like store, like a Walmart or a place like that, you're going to need about that 200 kilowatts of power size. So our thought is, is you come in and you actually make this generator your primary power source. So you remove your dependency from the grid. You can actually make electricity cheaper with this genset than uh, most electricity costs out there. And now you kind of have this model where you now make uh, power outside your building mm -hmm. and you use the grid as your backup power supply. So what and this, the two things kind of relate together is that what was wrong with the EV trucking part? Was it that it was too expensive to build at scale or was the demand not there? Yeah, so five years ago, fleets were saying they're going to buy EV trucks in mass volume. And that, you know, by this time, uh, you know, all most trucks being sold were going to be EVs. The reality is, is EV adoption has gone extremely slow and fleets are saying, you know, we're going to buy onesie, twosie, try them for a little while, maybe we'll buy more. Uh, but what's really happened is people are waiting until the government mandates that EVs need to be adopted. And we're seeing those dates continue to get pushed out to the right. And in addition to what you mentioned of the cost of EV trucks have continued to go up as well. So we're really just seeing this, uh, this situation where adoption isn't happening anywhere near the rate that uh, was initially expected. And so uh, being in the public markets, you know, the, uh, you know, companies needing to raise more cash and stock prices continue to decline. Uh, we just thought it was best to get out of that space and focus on an area where there's actually a lot of momentum, right? You know, we talk about AI, mm -hmm. uh, that needs a lot of power generation. So how does the, so what can you take from the EV trucking to the power world? Like how were some things transferable? Yeah, so this generator, the Carno, was actually something we acquired out of GE. And it had been a project that we were working on with General Electric for a few years where we were actually going to put it as the generator inside the truck to charge the batteries while you were driving. Oh, and so we acquired it out of GE a couple of years ago, and we always saw it as a solution initially for trucks, but we could could go into the power generation space. Uh, but as you know, we've kind of seen the market shift, we saw that uh, just going after power generation and stationary power first made a lot of sense. And, uh, and then, you know, it's still a technology that we see could be viable for that the EV trucking space down the road. Talk to us about, again, on this new uh, energy platform that you have, where are you in terms of, in your timeline of deploying these, making sales, who, are you, who do you target to sell to, that type of thing? Where are you in the development there? Yeah, so uh, we're at a point where later this year we'll actually be getting units out into customers' hands. So, uh, you know, it's been a, a north of five-year development program, uh, both when it was in GE and now at Hylion. And uh, so we're right on the cusp of just about to start getting units out there to customers. A few key markets we're going after. Uh, one is that EV charging space. Another is actually using waste gas. So if you think about like oil and gas sites, they flare a lot of gas right now. The Carno generator can actually be a, a great way to take that uh, gas and make electricity out of it. We're going after commercial applications like data centers, commercial warehouses, uh, you know, hotels, hospitals, those type of applications. And then another one which is kind of unique is actually the marine space. So powering ships and vessels off of this genset as well. Uh, one of the unique things with it that we haven't talked about is 
it's a fuel agnostic solution. So it can run on futuristic fuels like hydrogen, like ammonia, but can also run today on fuels like natural gas and diesel and propane. And so for customers, mm -hmm. you're kind of getting this like future proof solution. That's interesting. So it is transferable. Um, what is the demand like? Yeah, so uh, power generation demand is uh, very strong right now. I mean, just to share an example with you, like we obviously knew the, the EV trucking space well. Uh, when people would go talk to their utilities about getting a grid inter interconnect, trying to get electricity for their uh, their chargers, they're being told it's like two to three years just to even get access to the power to get connected to the grid. And then in some instances, uh, some parts of the country, they're just being told there just isn't enough power available at all. So, you know, we see a few things happening uh, where you've got EV charging, you've got AI for data centers, you've also got industrial applications moving over to electric. So the demand on the grid continues to increase, but we're also in a position where new power plants aren't being made and infrastructure isn't being upgraded at the, the rate that it needs to be. So that's where we're seeing the market really shift to these kind of distributed power generation models where you make your own electricity locally to power your facility as opposed to being uh, reliant on the grid. And so, you know, we see a massive shift happening to that sort of market uh, over the next few years here. And it's already started, which is great to see. So, I mean, I guess, I mean, you called out one of the, the big headwinds, I guess, facing the EV business today, at least here in the U.S., and that is whether the U.S. electrical grid can even support the transition to mm -hmm. EVs. Uh, you're down in Texas, you guys ha have your own grid, but how about just the big picture? Can the U.S. grid support the transition to EVs? I, I think it's going to be a tough one uh, without this distributed power generation model. Uh, just this morning in Texas, we had a power blip at this facility. I was on uh, a call this morning with a colleague in Michigan. Uh, her power was out. So, I mean, power, is, the reliability of the grid is a real problem right now. And uh, one crazy stat is if you plugged in 10 semi trucks into the grid, that would consume as much electricity as the entire Super Bowl stadium during game time. So wow. uh, that's a, it's a crazy amount of power that these trucks will draw. And uh, I don't think the grid's able to handle it today, at least not uh, universally across the country. And uh, if you do want to support that type of demand, you need not only the power plants, but then you need to go build transmission lines. You need to set up the local infrastructure. So it's kind of this ripple effect versus you could just put this generator down and start making your own electricity locally.